years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yes, live from Harlem, New York, it's the Ramble. We go until midnight tonight, and I'm your host. Look at me, I'm Alex Bennett. There we are, here we go, there 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 we go. Okay, let me get some audio levels correct here, and you know... I'm going to talk to you for the first uh, 25 minutes or so of the program, since I have some things to talk about. And uh, f- you know, uh, it, it, we had the um, we had the holiday season. It's over with now, and we're back to being whatever we're being. We're back to the ugly world we've always been in. Uh, peace on earth, goodwill towards men uh, certainly has never been the order of the day here in the United States, at least in the last couple of years. And um, uh, so uh, we have, of course, that to talk about. But, you know, I got to tell you, I, uh, uh, I have quite a few. I'm, I'm cleaning my desk while I'm talking to you. Uh, <laughs> uh, why am I even doing this? I, I wonder why I'm doing this. I just, I'm back again for more torture. That's what it is. Anyway, uh, uh, and I have a, I have a, I started sneeze, having a sneezing fit before I went on the air. Um, oh boy, I don't know where to start. Uh, uh, since I saw you last, let's see, when did we see you? On the 23rd of December, was it? When was it? 23rd of December? Something like that. Yeah. <coughs> mm. It was the 23rd of December because we didn't do a show. Yeah, the 24th. So it was the 23rd of, of December. We haven't done a show since, uh, and and we, we always take a, a, a winter's break so we can get a long winter's nap, and then we come back here and we do some more shows uh, to no avail uh, and to complete frustration uh, because uh, we like to, you know, i got to tell you something. One thing that came across my, my desk here, uh, or should I say across the computer, was I subscribed to this, uh, I, we, we, we're on Spotify, uh, it's one of the places you can w- see our uh, our you know our programming or uh, uh, hear our programming, and um, so I get a thing from Spotify and it says we had a wonderful year at Spotify this year. Our amount of podcasts that we are carrying went up twenty five thousand percent. I went what? <laughs> Twenty five thousand percent. How the, how many podcasts is that? And now we are just we're like that. You know, I, I used to talk about the fact that if you look in the long term about the history of the universe, uh, we here on this planet right now in our lifespan are going to be just like that, insignificant. Well, it's about the same, I think, as uh, <laughs> as um, uh, 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 doing. Uh, uh, you know, it's the same as, uh, as as doing a podcast. I mean, we're just we're so small and infinitesimal in that universe. And some people break through, I guess, because they've got big uh, outfits with lots of money backing them. Uh, there's some guy's got a podcast. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Mo Rocca has a thing called Mobituaries, and they they promote it like crazy on CBS Sunday Morning, which drives me insane. And of course, he's going to get a ton of people. Of course, nobody's out there publicizing. The Ramble or Gabnet, uh, because we don't have that kind of money. So we just sit here with our, uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe at the end after it's all added up, we have some like a thousand people listening per episode. So you know, uh, uh, but that's that's you know, it's just a small decimal. So you 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 get frustrated by that. But anyway, so uh, it was. Um, it was the holiday season, and it was the time to be jolly, and we were jolly, and uh, uh, everything was going okay, and then uh, a very sad thing happened. Uh, 
Tuesday night, Tuesday, or rather Monday, we get a call from our good friend uh, Natalia. And Natalia, as you may remember, recently got married to Jack Garfine, our dear friend, uh, and a man who we love dearly. And she says, Jack's back in the hospital again, and this time it's pretty serious. Uh, he had, uh, over the years, he'd had leukemia, and uh, it had uh, it manifested itself in several different ways, but he had managed to survive it pretty nicely. And when I first met him, he was still pretty robust. Uh, he was, I think, uh, maybe 87 at the time, maybe maybe 86, probably 87. This was 19, uh, this was 2017, so it was about two and a half years ago. And uh, she said he's in the hospital, and uh, we had to take him in, and uh, well, they had to resuscitate him because he had a, had a heart attack. While they were starting to put all, all the tubes and stuff in him, he had a heart attack. And they had to resuscitate him after about four minutes, and they just don't know what kind of brain function he has any longer. Uh, but well, I'll let you know what's happening. And she let, you know, we said we'd love to come down and, and see him, or we'd love to come down really and see you because, you know, there's very little we could do for him. And um, she said, I'll let you know. And then the next day she said, I think you better get down here. She said, it's, it's not looking any better. She says, I keep hoping. You know, she married him, what, about two months ago in August. Uh, and uh, they had a wonderful little wedding. And, you know, she just loved this man. God, she just loves him like to death. Um, and you might say, well, why does a, uh, I think she's like 41 or 42-year-old woman want to be with a man that old? She just adored him. I mean, I, you know, I know Marjorie loves me. I know she loves me a lot. I hope she can love me that much of what, how Natalia loved Jack, okay? I say loved because we went down um, Tuesday early evening uh, to see Jack. And uh, Jack was uh, being, in, in, what do they call it, the, all the tubes were in him, intubated, or I think it's, there's some term like that. And it was, uh, it, there wasn't much of Jack there to view. I mean, there were, all the tubes were in the way and in his mouth and so on. Um, but uh, we, uh, we saw him and we saw her. And then we decided we'd go out and get something to bite to eat, something to just get Natalia away from there. And we got her away from there. And then I finally decided I got to go back. I, want, I don't want to just go home from here. I want to go back. I, I got to say, if he even is capable of hearing me, goodbye. And um, I went back. And uh, so, of course, so did Marjorie. The two of us went back, and along with Natalia. And uh, Jack's uh, son, um, Herschel, was there, um, and he was singing to Jack uh, in, uh, in Hebrew some Hebrew songs that, you know, Jack loved. And uh, when he was through with that, um, I went in, along with Marjorie behind me and Natalia. And I went up to Jack, and I kissed him on the, on the head, and I whispered in his ear, Jack, just know I love you very much. And one eye opened up, and he looked at me. Now, I don't know what he saw, and I don't know if in his state he even knew what was going on. But I'd like to think he heard me say it, and he understood that I loved him that much, and I did. Um, how do I describe my feelings for Jack? Uh, they go beyond anything that I have had for another human being in, in years, okay? Um... Um, he was he was a terrific man, a terrific person. In case you don't know who Jack is, if you go to uh, the GabNet site right now, there are two whole interviews that I did with him. One is uh, about an hour and a half long. The other one is maybe 45 minutes, an hour long, maybe longer. Um, and, and Jack was, he had two very significant parts to his life. The first part was that he was a Holocaust survivor. He had been in 11 concentration camps. Uh, 
And uh, that's a lot of concentration camps, folks. Uh, Bergen-Belsen, uh, Auschwitz, uh, we could go on and on. Uh, when he was finally liberated, I think he was in Bergen-Belsen. Uh, and he tells all those stories about surviving in those concentration camps in the first interview. In the second interview, it's the other part of his history, in which he became a well-known Broadway director, um, teacher at the Actors Studio here in New York, discovered such people as James Dean, Steve McQueen, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other names of the people. He was a mentor to Marilyn Monroe, uh, and he was the director of two films. And uh, if you all remember Baby Doll, married and was married to Carol Baker for about 14 years. Um, and uh, it was, he was singularly uh, a man I, I, I loved. Um, I first met him, we first met him at Fire Island uh, here in New York. He was coming out to see some friends of ours, Adrian and Eddie. And um, I, I guess I was a little, I was kind of like a little pushed out of shape because we didn't get to stay in our room because he had to stay in our room because he didn't have the ability to walk up a whole bunch of stairs to go to the other rooms. So I was, I was you know, eh, who is this guy anyway? Well, I soon found out, as soon as he opened his mouth, I was hanging on every word. And immediately we took a walk, he, I, and Natalia, which I have on video. I'm gonna, it's gonna be on a, it's gonna be, I'm gonna present it to you at some point. And that's when he started telling me stuff and talking about stuff. And he was talking about the actor's studio and he was talking, he didn't talk much about the concentration camps. That came later. But he did talk about his history in the theater and about some of his beliefs about things and how he believed about politics. And I, oh, I was just riveted by the man because he was, I was learning at my late age from a man who was even older than I was. And uh, it was just wonderful. It was just wonderful. And I was just enthralled by the man. And then we got to know them. And we became friends. And I became very close to Jack. And I think Jack felt he was becoming very close to me as well. And we had this, this I'd like to say father-son relationship, but he's a little, not that much older than me. He's like eight years old, nine years older than I am, so he couldn't be my father, really. But he st I still felt of him as a fatherly figure to me. Um, my father died when I when he was 59, and I was, let's see, I would, I'd come home from the Navy, so it had to be 1964. I was 24 at the time. And um, so I, and I love my father dearly. Um, uh, and, and Jack was the closest person that I had found since the death of my father who represented what my father represented to me. I love Jack. I just love Jack dearly. And so I, I kissed him goodbye, and um, I told him I loved him. I made peace with myself and him. And a few hours later, we get the news that he had passed away. Um, we knew, look, Jack died at the age of 89. We knew that he was going to go eventually. These aren't things that you know, go on forever. Uh, we knew that he had been ill, and over the last year, his health had declined enough that it was sometimes very hard to hold a conversation with him. But the last night, really nice thing, we, we did see him a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we went over to see him. But we also saw him at Thanksgiving, where he came over and he said to Marjorie, this is the best turkey I've ever had. And we felt that considering the 89 years he had lived, that's probably pretty much of a compliment. Although I'm sure he wasn't getting great turkey there for about you know four or five years of his life when he was in concentration camps. Um, and he was still kind of out of it, but nevertheless enough there to say how great the turkey was. And we had a nice time. And then we saw him a couple of weeks later 
and then that was the last time I spent any real time with Jack. But they were they were harder to spend time with him because he was less coherent, less there than he had been when I first met him. And I could sit there and hold a conversation with him. Oh, he was hard of hearing, so I'd have to yell at him, and he'd say what? But he he understood me. But it was it, he was getting into declining health, and then ultimately he died. You know, when somebody like that dies, you feel very bad about it. Um, and I, you know, but on the other hand, the, I have the inability. I I I I cry when people die who are young, who are vital. I cried when my father died because he was only 59 and I should have been able to have him for at least another 15, 20 years, right? Uh, but when somebody dies at, at, um, um, uh, at that age, you have to just wish him goodbye and say, I, you know, I love you and I wish there were more time that I could spend with you. But, you know, life isn't infinite here on Earth. And uh, so you then say, it's time for me to say goodbye to him. Uh, and, you know, I, who, I, who I really felt we had to be there for was Natalia, because Natalia, I never, I've never known a love in my life of, for anybody, for somebody else like Natalia had for Jack. And so I felt especially bad for her. They had been together for about nine years. And then they recently married, which I was happy about because, you know, she was able to then as be his ultimate uh, arbiter as to his health and what was going to be done about his health and so on. But uh, I, I just, um, you know, I loved, I, I, what I said is today to somebody, I said, we didn't only love Jack, we loved Natalia too. We, we always said we loved Jack and Natalia. It was always Jack and Natalia. And um, it was just, it was just, I felt so bad for her and so sad for her. But, you know, as I told her, I said, look, kiddo, you know, you know what you signed up for. You know, it wasn't like it was a spring chicken that was going to last forever or that he was going to, he was, you were going to beat him to the grave. I said, that just wasn't going to happen. And you knew that. But the time you had with him was so wonderful and you were so loving to each other that uh, very few people are ever blessed with that, that sort of love. But I gotta tell you folks, I love Jack and I, I, I spoke at his funeral today for a brief moment. And I, I simply said that I didn't realize that this man had affected me uh, all my life. That when I was young, I wanted to be an actor. That, that was my first desire in life. It wasn't to do this fucking radio thing, which is a stupid business. Uh, I wanted to be an actor. Uh, and, and when I looked at acting, I studied st the Stanislavski method, and I knew about the actor's studio here in New York, but I also then watched the actors who I admired uh, who were going to form my, my belief in... I got an itchy nose... Uh, 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 my belief in, in, in what theater was and, and how theater existed and so on. And so I look to people like James Dean, Paul Newman, Steve McQueen, uh, actors like that. Uh, there were a whole bunch of them, Ed Begley. I mean, there were a whole bunch of actors that I, that I admired. And they were the very actors that Jack influenced and trained. Jack taught. James Dean, how to act. He was one of Paul Newman's um, uh, 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 teachers. Uh, and so I said, what I said at the thing today was, he had an influence on me when I was a kid. And I didn't know it, because I didn't know who Jack Garfine was. But later on in life, life comes full, full circle, and all of a sudden you do find out that this guy influenced those very people who influenced you. And if I'd ever become an actor, I suppose that would have held more true than it did, but I turned out to be a radio announcer, which is, you know, give us a shit about that. I probably would have failed as an actor, but I, I always wanted to be an actor. And I did, was on a path towards theater. And then all of a sudden, broadcasting got in the way. And uh, I, uh, I said, well, you know, if I do really good in radio, somebody will ask me to act. 
and nobody's ever asked me to act. So, but all I'm saying is, is that this man had an influence on me long before I ever knew him, because he had an influence on the people that I appreciated and the people that I cared about, uh, and that I, I w watched out for. And uh, he was a major teacher in the theater. He was a major director. Directed two films. If you ever want to see them, look up Jack Garfine on. Uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, 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 IMDB, and uh, it'll show you the movies that he directed. Uh, and uh, he was not a very successful movie director, and part of the reason for that was Jack had an inability to compromise, which is a wonderful thing, okay? The ability to not compromise, to stand up for what you believe, uh, and he did two films, both of which got him into a lot of trouble with the studios. One was about racism in the South, uh, and it was called The Strange One. And the other one, I'm trying to remember the name of it now, was with Carol Baker, his, his then wife. And it was about a woman who gets raped and then somehow falls in love with her rapist. It's, it's a strange, interesting film, but for its time, was completely, completely ahead of its time and maybe too far ahead of its time now. But he wouldn't compromise on those films, and, and what you have to learn when you first go to Hollywood, he had a contemporary by the name of Elia Kazan, who was his best friend, and Kazan did very well in Hollywood, but he did it because he knew how to play the system. Jack never knew how to play the system. And so consequently, uh, he, uh, uh, he, he never reached his potential as a motion picture director, uh, but he could have been another Kazan, okay, uh, if he just played the game. But he wouldn't play the game. So he went back to teaching the theater and, and, and opening theaters and teaching his teaching method. And uh, I even got something on, on my Facebook page from somebody who was one of his students in Paris who said the man taught me and he was the greatest acting teacher I ever had. Anyway, I love Jack Garfine, and God knows I'm going to miss him. Uh, and it, it, I didn't know him long enough, but maybe that's why I can really treasure the relationship I did have with him because it was so short and so delicate that, uh, you know, but what, what's been left behind is Natalia, who Marjorie has had created a great friendship with and who is a good friend of mine as well and who I love dearly. And they've got that cat, you know, Berta. Uh, who we also love like crazy. And, and uh, I, uh, you know, she's still here. And, and everything that the goodness in him and the wisdom in him is all embodied in her. And uh, I don't know what to say. Fuck it. I, who's, who, you know, you know, what's the line out of a Touch of Evil in which uh, Marlena Dietrich at the end is trying to describe the Orson Welles character? And she says, what can you say about him except that he was some kind of a man? And I don't know, maybe that's the best way for me to, to mention, talk about Jack Garfine. Did not know him very long, knew him less than anybody in the room today when I gave my speech, and I said that. But boy, did he have an effect on me. And I loved him dearly, and I'm, I just miss him. Just miss him. Anyway, um, the other thing is, uh, the, over the, uh, over the uh, period that we were out, uh, I, I, where did I leave you? Did I leave you with, uh, no, I didn't. I was leaving you at a time when I was supposed to go, I think, to see the doctor, the oncologist, who was going to decide what they were going to do with me. And uh, here's what they're going to do with me. I, as you know, I have prostate cancer. Now, don't go all, you know, oh, oh, we're so sorry for your illness, Alex, you know, because people were doing that. When I, when I put down that I have prostate cancer on, on my Facebook page, the reaction, I'll, I'll never do that again. That was dire because people do not understand not all cancers are created equal. Okay, you can get pancreatic cancer goodbye in six months. You can get lung cancer goodbye in a year. You can get uh, uh, um, stomach cancer. Well, I mean, they can fix it and maybe they can. You know, prostate cancer at my age, well, when I 
I looked at the oncologist and I said, is this going to kill me? He looked me straight in the face, almost with a look of, uh, don't make me laugh. Uh, he looked at me and said, no. <laughs> Here's what they're going to do for me. Uh, I, uh, I have uh, intermediate uh, prostate cancer. Uh, it's not low risk, but it's not high risk. Uh, so what they're going to do is they're just going to kill the shit out of it. And what they're going to do, first of all, I on uh, Tuesday, I'm going in to have a spacer put in, which is a spacer they put between the rectum and the, and the bowel. I think I mentioned this before we went off the air last. Uh, between the rectum and the bowel, and then they give me uh, a... Uh, um, see, I don't know how much of this I told you before I left. Maybe I told you everything. I don't know. But uh, and and then they're going to uh, he's going to put like three little gold pointers in the prostate, so the radiation knows where to go or you know have a have a reference point. Uh, then uh, that's Tuesday. Then they're going to send me in for what they call a rehearsal for the what you know it you've heard about it uh, on television as a cyber knife, but some hospitals don't subscribe to the cyber knife because it's the same as something called stereotactic uh, radiology, okay? Uh, and uh, it, it is, it, difference between stereotactic radiology and cyber knife, zero, okay? Zero, all right? So I'm going to have uh, the, um, um, uh, the uh, cyber knife or stereotactic uh, uh, Radiation. The difference with this is, is that like uh, well, we had somebody on the show, Vernon Nunn, who had radiation for prostate cancer a while back, maybe I don't know, five years, ten years, I don't know how long ago it was, and he had to go every day for like two months, five days a week, and get radiated, and it's a kind of a blast you wherever they can radiation. Well, this is a more targeted radiation, and it's a stronger radiation, so as opposed to having to go in five days a week for two months to get radiation, this thing, which is now the preferred method, uh, is uh, five treatments of 45 minutes each, and then that's it for your that radiation. Then this guy is also going to, uh, then after that, I guess once it settles down or something, is going to then go in and in an hour operation which they will put me under for, which is, again, it's an outpatient thing, much like this uh, putting this spacer in, which they're going to put me out for. Uh, uh, it, 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 it will, uh, he will put in the, the uh, uh, radioactive seeds. These are seeds they plant in the prostate so that you're given out with, you know, a lot of radiation in your prostate, specifically for your prostate. And he said, between those two things, it should completely wipe out whatever cancer you have. Okay. So very rarely does it ever come back. It has about a 90% uh, uh, or 90 to 95% cure rate. And uh, that which don't get cured, they can always take care of with hormones, but he doesn't think that that will happen with me. So uh, uh, I begin the radi you know, I, I will begin the radiation after we do our trial, which is coming up towards the end of the month. But in the meantime, I will get in preparation for that by getting the spacer, by getting them. They have to do what they call a rehearsal for the uh, cyber knife thing. And um, you know, they have to make a bed for me that I lie on because it has to be such that I don't move too much. And it's uh, you know it's a 45 minute session, top to bottom. Get undressed, get on the thing. They set it up and everything, and then they zap zap for a couple of minutes, and then you're through. Okay, uh, and uh, that will go on probably right after the trial is over, which would be the end of the month, towards the end of the month. And then I don't know either a month afterwards or shorter than that, uh, he will go and implant the seeds, which is again an outpatient procedure. I'm in there, they put me out, they put them in, I get up, I leave, okay? Now, the only thing, the only side effects I should feel from all of this is slight fatigue, they say, but I'm always tired when I do this show, slight fatigue, and um, 
uh, you may find me saying, hey, folks, uh, keep talking with each other. I got to go pee because you say, they say you have to urinate a little more. Uh, you know, more, more frequency of urination. Now, whether that will happen or not, I don't know, because I've been on all these pills that have shrunk the prostate, so maybe it'll go a little easier on me, or it will go a little worse. But that's supposedly about the worst of it. There's no, uh, uh, there's no you know, baldness, losing hair. I don't have to worry about that. Uh, there's, uh, uh, there, there's, uh, there, 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 there are no other side effects except for those two things. So uh, hopefully uh, I, will, uh, I will be fine. And, uh, you know, everything's going to be fine that way. What it's going to do to the program is we're going to find, depending upon how taxing it is on me, that I may take some nights off or there may be nights that I don't do it. Like the end of the month when we got this trial going on, there are four days I will not be on the air, definitely, because I have to get up so early in the morning to go to the goddamn thing. But that will play by ear, too. But when I'm doing the treatments, we're going to have to play that all by ear. Who knows? I may not miss a show. On the other hand, I may miss every single one of them. But i got to take care of my health and get that taken care of. So, you know, Jack will be here doing the uh, his show no matter what, and I'll be on and off uh, for, eh, say, until, until mid-March. Okay, until March. Okay, I figure by then it should all be through. Uh, and then uh, we'll be back to, you know, to, to do what we do here if we want to continue to do it. So that's my, uh, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the latest. And, and I might, I'll be, I'll, I have that thing on Tuesday. Probably won't wind up doing a show Tuesday night. I don't know, though. I just don't know. I can't tell you, okay? It'll be really dependent on how I feel uh, after that. Uh, I, the only thing is, it's nothing that's going to cause any nothing, that cause any effects like radiation does. By the way, the prime thing of the radiation with the seeds is that uh, after you get the seeds put in, uh, if you fart, a mushroom cloud comes out of your ass. So I just thought I'd mention that. Uh, but so I don't know. I don't know what the story's going to be, you know, and I don't know what the prognosis, how we're going to, how we're going to, how we're going to tolerate the whole thing is the other, is the other thing. Uh, chances are it's going to be fairly easy peasy. That's, that's the way he kind of described it. And if I go to his site, he describes it that way as well. Uh, so, you know, we, we just got to, we got to take it a, a step at a time, a step at a time. Uh, but uh, we'll we'll let you know, and uh, I hope you'll bear with me while we go through all of that. And uh, um, you know, it, for me, it's a great adventure. It's like big sci-fi shit, you know. Anyway, listen, our um, our lines are open. If you feel like uh, giving me a call, uh, the lines are open, and we can start taking some calls here. Um, I'm a little tired tonight, obviously, because I was up early to go to the funeral because I had the funeral. And then we had the thing out at the cemetery, and we were, there. We were supposed to go to their house tonight because they were sitting Shiva, but uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to, I had to come back here. Hello, Phil. How are you? Wait a minute. Let me, let me, uh, 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 let me go to number three. There we go. There he is. There, he's on the bottom there where he was when we left him. Hey, I, I know how you're doing. Uh, you know, when I uh, spoke to you uh, on New Year's Day, and uh, you told me about uh, Jack uh, Garfine. The what I was doing, I had a very close friend that I was very close to for over forty years. Yeah. And he he passed away about two years ago. Uh, we had a tradition that New Year's Day. Yeah. He, his wife, uh, my ex-wife when I had her, and, and now Faye and myself, we would always get together for uh, for New Year's brunch, and we usually go to the Fairmont. Uh, and, uh, it was a, it was a tradition. So yeah. now that he's passed away in order to keep his memory, uh, in, in our, in our minds and continue, uh, his memory, yeah. uh, we can do the, the new year's day brunch. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it just so happened that his, uh, widow brought along a friend of hers who's mm -hmm. a, uh, docent at the Throckmorton. And uh, her 
first husband was uh, Bill, Billy Lucas, mm-hmm. a comedian, mm-hmm. uh, also passed away. But uh, I didn't know him, mm-hmm. uh, but it was just, uh, you know, I guess yeah. you did. Uh, hey, Todd Morris has called us. Todd, would you do me a favor? Turn your camera sideways so we get you widescreen. Uh, well, that didn't do it. Do it the other direction. Do it the other direction. He may have it locked. What? It, it, he may have oh. the screen locked. Do you have your screen to, locked? To oh, be yep, got it. There we go. Got it. There we go. Oh, okay, that. that's much better. That's much better. Let me see here. Uh, 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 Jeff is calling here. Let me uh, get, find Jeff a place in our in our citizen panel. Stein's all over. There we go. Okay. There we go. And there we go. There's Jeff Stein. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Good. Yeah. Nice yeah. So. Did you notice that Todd's truck is tuck and roll? Is that his? What? Is that your truck? No. <laughs> what is that a truck? Yeah. yeah. Really? Wow. I'm always in my. Wow, you really kind of kind of fitted that thing out so it's kind of like plush and comfortable. Oh, it's it's so comfortable. It's not even funny. I'm yeah. sitting on my bed. I got my computer and all my other stuff in front of me. Yeah. It's pretty much set up like you guys have your offices, yeah. but it's in my truck. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, so, if you're gonna, so with, if you're gonna be a trucker, that that's the best way to do it. You know. You got to do it in comfort. Yeah. Got to do it in comfort and style. How you doing? So with Jim? that, what? What? With that tuck and roll, did he go down and have the hydraulics put in so he can bounce the front of the truck uh, like the uh, low riders? No, I'm sure he did. Um, no, I don't do. Uh, <laughs> you don't do low riders? Oh, yeah. just tuck and roll. Yeah. No. There's Mr. <laughs> Jeff. Uh, <laughs> Hello, Jeff Stein. How are you? I'm pretty good. I really uh, had a big uh, vacation, I guess, at home where all kinds of. Uh, Pam's uh, sister and her uh, husband and, and a couple of the kids showed up. and it's What's known as a staycation. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, that's what's been going on. We, 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 did, we did nothing. We did absolutely nothing. Christmas Eve, nothing. Okay? Yeah. New Year's Eve, Marjorie was asleep before midnight. And I watched I watched the ball drop on TV and said, "So fucking what?" You know. I woke up at exactly midnight. I, I'd probably <laughs> fallen asleep around nine. Uh, I I looked at the uh, clock on the next to the bed. Oh, it's midnight. And I said, "Okay, Faye, come to bed." <laughs> yeah, I mean, that who was cares? it. Who gives a shit? You know. The I mean, it's amateur. In the world. What? It's the biggest bullshit in the world. Oh, it's it's uh, it's amateur night. Can you imagine yeah. a million people in Times Square? A million and a half. Unbelievable. Right. Where do they put them all? Where do they pee? <laughs> you know, they don't. Some people wear diapers to that thing. I'm serious. Well, once you go in, I, I guess you can't leave. You can't leave. And, uh-huh. you know. And tr- when it's over, they all leave in 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they leave How behind. How do they get out of it? I've been there on, that, on New Year's Eve on like one occasion, I think. And uh, they somehow, everybody gets out of there, you know. I mean, good luck getting a subway, you know, that yeah. kind of crap. But, you know, so what? Um, uh, <coughs> anyway. Um, oh, I got to, l- l- hold on a second. Let me say something to a friend of mine. Um, right. Whoops, wait a minute. I, well, I didn't, couldn't do that. Here we go. Let me do this again. Call back message. Okay, a message. Okay, I want to leave a message. Okay. Um, it's going to be on Netflix on uh, the 4th of January, the whole series. And it's called Dracula. Period. Okay. There we go. I just I heard <laughs> I heard they were talking about Netflix that Bob Rubin may have gotten his uh, special place there. Not that or I he... know, but I, you know, didn't tell me. Oh, uh, Larry Brown said something about it. Uh, I, I went and saw him on Friday. Yeah, yeah. When he was doing his album. Mm, yeah. How did that go? Uh, all right. You know, he he steps up to the plate. 
he was, I think, a little bit nervous uh, going into it, uh, yeah. uh, you know, feigning that uh, he couldn't remember any of his jokes. But uh, he got up there. He's a total pro. Yeah. You know? Oh, of course he is. Of course he yeah. is. He's been doing it for so long, and he's so good at it. Uh, a great comedian. Just an absolute yeah. great comedian, you know. Yeah, I enjoyed um, it very much. Yeah. So anyway, it, so it wasn't a, it was not a happy New Year for us. Uh, what with Jack uh, passing, yeah. but you know, um, and that's that's how things go. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, and you know the Hanukkah uh, the celebration. I guess in um, New Jersey. Was it Jersey? Where are they hacked the guy up? Um, uh, those five. The Hanukkah thing it was a Shabbat. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm trying to uh, get along with the fact that a friend just died, and you're talking about Jews getting hacked up in New Jersey. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. Uh, it's it's uh, it's interesting that what I've been training for and and doing, uh, which is the security at uh, Chabad's and uh, synagogues, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's timely that uh, that I'm doing it. No, it's not timely that you're doing it. It's sad that you're doing. It's sad, but it's necessary. Yeah, but uh, you know, I mean, I I don't I don't know that it's necessary because, quite frankly, I don't think you're going to be able to stop anything. Well, look at the uh, the guy in that church in uh, uh, Texas. Uh, within six seconds, he uh, he brought down the shooter uh, who had a shotgun. Yeah, but you're showing us one instance of that. Well, this is what we're training to do, and that's what he well, trained well, to do. Well, I, I, I don't think, I, quite frankly, I think bringing a gun to, a, to a, a place of worship is a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah, and well, I don't think you're going to stop anything. Well, I hope I don't have to. You know, if somebody wants to do it, they're going to know you're there, and they're going to find a way around it. Okay. Uh, well, you know, we got one guy, Dobbins, uh, no, that, That's <laughs> fine. Arm. That doesn't have anything yeah. to do with it. You can pray all you want. You better pray. Yeah. You know, uh, all I'm saying is, is that if somebody knows you're there and they still want to do it, they're going to figure out a way to do it and oh, get around you. They won't know I'm there. You know, I'll be uh, like one of the parishioners they, uh, or congregants. They they won't have any idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and so what are you going to do, pull out a gun and start firing like crazy? Not like crazy. Uh, oh, but, oh, uh, oh, well, you're going to tell me that there's a possibility you could hit one of the people in the church? Not, in the not synagogue? me. Not, not you. Not oh, me. not you. Of course not, Phil. No. Come on. Uh, you know, I mean, I've got... That's, that's bullshit. I've got 25 years. That's of, bullshit. I don't care if you got got 100 years of experience. Uh, it, it, when something like that happens, uh, everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Well, that's true, but that's why you train yeah. uh, on those scenarios. Matter of fact, this Sunday... Well, welcome uh, six, to the new year, ladies and gentlemen. This is yeah, a really happy yeah. talk. Yeah, well, 16 of us will be in a synagogue training... You know, I'm going to take a picture with a nice wide-angle lens. Good, with good. 16 guys with uh, AK-47. Great. Now we all have pictures of them, so that the people who want to uh, go to that, the that synagogue and and do stuff can uh, figure out who yeah. they are. Well, I'll do it from the back. Yeah, you know, it'll be interesting. Good shot. So this is all that's going to call tonight. Fuck you, everybody. Well, uh, yes, uh, uh, yes. Uh, you, man, I called. Shit. No, I know you called. Thank you. Thank hey, you. Rich, I'm not liver. talking about you. I'm talking to the people who aren't calling. Well, normally I don't, and I was trying to tell you guys why, but you know, I was listening to you talk, and then homeboy with the synagogue. Yeah, I know. Hey, tell me, well, Rambo, shut Rambo you. over here. <laughs> <laughs> I shoot 98 out of 100, Rambo. Did you? 98 out of 100 what? What? 98 out of 100 what? Which a weapon do you talk about? Uh, okay. Well, I shoot 100 out of 100. What weapon? Uh, I carry a 45 1911 and uh, a five inch barrel. And Peace I have a on Earth, goodwill towards inch. men. Here we go. Okay. There we go. No, as you say it, Alex, my bad. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, it, what I was saying is, uh, is peace on eth Earth, goodwill towards men. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that don't happen anymore. We're in the United States. <laughs> Good for you, John. We got Democrats, Republicans. We got everybody with an attitude problem, and everybody got a pistol. If they don't, they got a knife or they got something else. Yeah. But they'll find something to use. Yeah, I think it's time to put down our arms. I think it's time to put down our knives. I think it's time for us to start to, 
uh, well, getting a little more peaceful because this isn't going to get any better if we It ain't going to happen. It, it, you know, uh, this has been the way Phil, it's been let somebody Europe. else talk, please. All right. My bad. I'm sorry. But I agree. You know, I wish that would happen yeah. because we all need to get along. Yeah. You know. And, but, you know. Yeah. Now you can talk, Phil. Now we have a space in the conversation. <laughs> uh, I, I was he, he Todd looked at to me like he did, didn't know what I was talking about so I was going to pull it pull one out of the safe no you don't have to pull one out of the safe no, we, don't oh, we, we, we know it's a penis substitute Phil uh, exactly but I want to see his toys <laughs> you go want to see his toys okay yes yes Jeff hi yeah. so, hey, hey. The one thing that I uh, had some experience, which which was uh, totally unexpected, was I, I went to Argentina, mm -hmm. and and everybody said, oh, they've, they've got a really good synagogue, an old one that's been there a couple of hundred years mm -hmm. and whatever, and you ought to go see it. So I went to see there, and first of all, the doors were all locked. And I'm knocking on the door and seeing if anybody's there, whatever. Finally, the guy kind of opens the door and says, who are you? Why have you been here? What? Blah, 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 blah. And ask a whole bunch of questions. And the guy says, well, I'll, I'll get back to you in a few minutes. And he locks the door. So I never get in. And wow. I'm there with my wife and my friend. And his wife, and uh, I tell you, it took us 20 minutes before the rabbi would actually come in there and talk to me at all. Uh, Todd, and, yeah, yeah. And it's a different attitude about about because seven people or whatever got killed there one day. Yeah, wow. Todd, you were going to say you were you were going to say why you didn't call or something like that. Oh yeah, well, um, I had like, like, um, a just bad uh, experience, straight up. Um, I got one wisdom tooth pulled out, no medicine or nothing like that. Then my truck broke down oh. right when I got back over the road. Then my truck broke down again, yeah. and, and now I'm over here in Minnesota in the cold, chilling, and that's reasons why. And I, I had Happy New Year all by myself. But, you know, Aww. it's all good. You know, it comes with a job. So, you know, um, I'm like real low on money and everything like that. But I'm going to get back on my feet. But that was the reasons why I, I didn't say Happy New Year to everybody, all of you guys. And I was really trying to get back on there. And I was trying to put a light, um, you know, if I ever went home to get like a little lamp yeah. to put in the back of the truck. So when I'm talking to you guys, you can actually see me. <laughs> Sometimes I move around, you guys can't see. Me. Well, listen, we uh, we appreciate your call, you know, and and I know how we, uh, how difficult it is because you're a truck driver, you know. By the way, we're being joined here by uh, let me see by Tony Magno. Let me uh, see if we can put him uh, hey. find a spot for him. Uh, let me see here. Webhead is it Webhead? No. Yeah, that's me. It's where your Webhead. Okay, there's Webhead, ladies and gentlemen. There's Tony. Uh, and hello to Patrick. How are you, Patrick? How was your holiday season? Um, pretty good, pretty quiet. Didn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, hung out at home because I had my one cataract surgery right before Christmas, so mm -hmm. I couldn't drive uh, then. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to risk it. And then New Year's, I never go anywhere because it's fucking amateur drinking and driving night. So, yeah. actually, you can drive pretty much after you get the cataract surgery. About a day later, you're you're good to go. You yeah, know. but I, um, you know, Christmas. My family's Christmas mm -hmm. was before Christmas Eve. Yeah. Okay. It was too close to when the surgery happened, mm -hmm. and when I was comfortable transferring out of my car um so i didn't i didn't go to family christmas they came to me christmas eve then for uh, a lunch and gift. yeah yeah 
So anyway, so uh, um, um, uh, yeah, so the cataract surgery went okay. And uh, are you, are you gonna have to buy new glasses or, or are they still gonna be, is this prescription gonna be okay for you? No, I'm gonna need a, a new script because I go in two weeks to get my other eye done. Okay, and then when you get those done, you get the new glasses, yeah. Okay. So now, the prescription in my eye that I had done is too strong, but not enough to fuck everything up, so. Um, so we'll get new glasses once both eyes are, are finished. Yeah, good, good. Well, um, yeah, that's, a, that's a happy uh, uh, new year for you, you know. Um, and did I, was I right? It's a simple operation. It's just easy peasy. Just, you know, it's nothing. It used to be something. It used to really be something, but it's not anymore, so. And hello to Tony. How are you, Tony? How was your holiday season? Uh, quiet and a little bit sad, actually, to tell you the truth. Well, I'm fine, but my cousin Kevin, who's a fireman, he just called me up. He's got bladder cancer post 9-11. So he's going to be in Sloan. I don't know anything else yet until he starts treatment. But it's it's from the dump, Alex. That's what it is. It's from the dump. It's from the pile. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Wow. He needs six weeks of chemo, and he's got an appointment for Sloan. So they, he definitely needs six weeks, but uh, I don't know more than that until he gets the appointment. But he def they definitely told him that already. But uh, so we're gonna see. But he's gonna have to retire. He's they, they, they're gonna give him chemo. Yeah, said. six weeks definitely. Not radiation, but chemo. He told me chemo, but you know what happened, Alex? His wife, which we don't want to say, guess his the mother is a nurse out in Long Island, and they thought it was just a little tumor because he was peeing a lot of blood. So he called, actually, we had my mom in Sloan for a checkup Friday. Mm -hmm. She had her scan. Everything's clean. So then his sister called my brother because we were in Sloan, and she was all upset. So he goes, what's the matter? And he told us that Kevin had a procedure. They saw her tumor, but he had it done in Long Island. They opened him up. They thought it was just a little tumor on the bladder. Now, Sloan, he got an appointment, second opinion. They have to maybe go back in. Because they couldn't get it on the other side of the block. By the way, folks, we like to think of our program as the happiest yeah. show on earth. Go ahead. So I was trying. I was like, he has to, they, since his body is still inflamed inside, mm -hmm. he definitely needs six weeks, but they couldn't finish the whole procedure. I guess when they went in, they saw more it, on the other side. It's funny, but usually I've, what I've heard uh, is with, with the bladder cancer, they sometimes do a uh, fill the bladder with some kind of stuff. And then, you know, you yeah. pee it out, and then they do it again, maybe in a couple of weeks or something. That's the kind, but that's not the chemo they're doing with him, right? No, well, from what you know, he's got, he's gonna, he's going to slow next week again. Yeah. So he definitely needs six weeks, but they may have to go back in. But the question is, though, you know, in this type of cancer, I was googling it, so I shouldn't have did that. But his doctor told you know, him. He, can I tell you something? Let me tell you something. This is interesting for all of you. I yeah. said to my doctor, my oncologist, I said, uh, yeah, well, I was, I've gone online and I've read blah, blah, blah. And then Marjorie said, yeah, he's always on looking at the Internet to I, see about I, medical stuff. I did and, that for you. and the oncologist looked at her and said, it's a very good place to look. You I learn a lot yeah. about <laughs> about medicine by going on the well, Internet. So he approved it. Huh? They were rep like, you know what I heard? And it's actually true is that. His type of cancer, it's an 80% chance, Alex, it comes back in five years. And then they treat it all again like it's new. Yeah, but it's, it, it is treatable, however. Bladder cancer is far more yeah, treatable that's what he told than a lot me. of the yeah, It's very treatable. Yeah. They can even remove part of the bladder, too, I was reading. It, they can do that. But what I'm saying is, is that, in fact, the bladder is, um, is, is an organ that if you cut a bunch of it out of it, uh, there, there's an, an, it's elastic enough that it can grow again, you know, or it'll grow out to a whole, you know. How come they use the cystoscopy to yeah. see if uh, I had bladder cancer? Because they, you know, a, they would check. That, that's how they, well, you, that's how blood? they, because number one, they don't like you and they wanted you to have a cystoscopy. <laughs> that was twice. The start of, I, Get me, I had two cystoscopies oh, by the same doctor. I didn't, you know, don't you believe I don't have bladder cancer yet? But, you know, yeah. but anyway, <laughs> uh, but I had two. And uh, in case people don't know what that is, I won't tell you because it'll just ruin your, it hurts. Your, it'll, uh, it'll ruin your, it's dinner. uncomfortable. 
It, That's it, what he told me. It's, it's uncomfortable. Really bad. He huh? told me that was the worst part when he. Had, it's like, just uncomfortable. It's because you yeah. know what they're doing, and that's what makes it so damn uncomfortable. You know. So we were all upset, but he's saying stay. He said he's strong, so pretty much he he thinks he'll be good. So we got him. Gonna, he's going to. And of go course, the the fire department, I'm sure, has his back on this if he wants yeah, to quit. Yeah, you know quit. what they said. He went. Yeah, right now they said he can get 75 percent if he retires, but now that he's going to be hooked to 911. So that's the like 100 percent. I bet it's going to go off. Yeah. 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 Well, they and signed really something that uh, hmm? anybody that was exposed on 9-11, I guess there's 90 years of uh, medical uh, that well, uh, that they just signed up for. They're going to try to get him into it. But the funny part is, is that they, I was looking, when I looked at bladder cancer, it's very rare. It comes, it only shows an average age of 74. He's 49. Uh, so yeah, it's, well, it's he's got, just, it, there's no question that the pile did it to him. There's yeah, no question just, about it. They just buried a guy. Uh, he told me in the summer he was like in low forties from a different mm-hmm. rare cancer. They're all, you know, Alex. I'll say this again. Rudy and them. Did they fuck up? These guys should never have been down there. Well, they if they if they were down there, down there. Uh, I think Todd. Did you want to say something, Todd? I'm just saying. My bad. I didn't mean to interrupt. I should have waved. No, no, that's I, fine. That's fine. But I was agreeing because you know I was around that way when 9/11 happened in New York. And, you know, that just was just horrible the way that they, they, they did all of the firemen and police department. Well, I thought, yeah, retired police officer from New York. And he and, was well, they didn't take they didn't take proper hazmat stuff uh, into consideration. Yeah, it's gone. You know, my, my uncle was only a, a few blocks from uh, from the scene. He lived on Mott Street and he was home oh, at the time. That's a little bit, I feel, I think, right? No, it's uh, mm-hmm. well, oh. he was home at the time. Now you're going to finish the story. Oh, yeah, or was yeah. he just home at the time? He was home at the time. He oh, said, okay. you know, there was a lot of dust and, and shit all over the place. I thought you were going to say he was home at the time, and then he got cancer. You know? No, not I, yet. Instead, it was like, he was home at the time. So were a lot of people. You know? Yeah, well, you know, he was within, what, six blocks? My of, wife, uh, my ex-wife, Ronnie, was, was home at the time <laughs> when yeah. that happened, you know? And see what happened to her. Yeah, look what happened to her. Yeah. Well, who knows? You never know. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you never know. Actually, you don't know really. I mean, there was so much asbestos and everything just falling all over the place. You know that those yeah. guys should have been protected with hazmat suits and everything else. It should have been held handled with kit gloves, but it wasn't. You know. Yeah. But yeah. Rudy's so, America's mayor. Fuck him, really. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah, I have when they built the World Trade Center, <laughs> it, it was it was all mafia payoffs that oh, got stop, got man. the work. Oh, it was. I, I happen to know. My father had to pay. And, uh, yeah, you know, every, 2001. yeah, they well, and, anyway, because we put we put the original carpet in the World Trade Center and I actually worked oh. on that building. Well, did you see it flying out? Uh, anyway, uh, it was it was, you know, I mean, it, it, it's sad what happened to those guys and it could have been prevented. But, you know, the thing is, yeah. we never had anything like that happen. And so we uh, we didn't know how to handle it. You know, yeah. we didn't know how to uh, how, how what precautions should be. Taken. Well, they were looking for bodies, too. You know, uh, I, you know originally. Uh, oh, Todd wants to say. Yeah, something, yes, but... Todd. I was just going to say when you said we wasn't used to it, mm-hmm. we better get fucking used to it. Yeah. Yeah. Better get used to it real fucking fast. Well, because a lot of shit's going on with uh, my man over there as a partner, Trump, fucking up shit. But we better get used. Yeah, I said it. I saw your little gun too. Yeah, yeah I saw little, uh, you, you, that's you your Don't ever show me that shit again. Look, don't ever show that again. I'm just messing with you. But now, nah. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely gonna have to do something, man, soon because we need to not have any more planes or or, or anything any near any any major city. And that's the reason why I didn't understand. You know, even before 9-11, we didn't do that. We didn't do that. Yeah. 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 Trump's, uh, Trump ordered a, a hit today, and I and they took out the second in command of uh, the Iranian general uh, uh, and uh, 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 in retaliation for what uh, happened at the, uh, what do you call it, uh, at the embassy. Uh, you know, Trump stood up and he's letting them know you attack us, you'll be attacked back. I'm I'm happy he did it. You know, 
Maybe it's going to teach the Iranians a lesson that uh, you, you don't do this You're stuff. hearing major don't. voices of approval here, aren't you? Uh, you know, you guys wouldn't approve uh, anything Trump did if, you know, if he uh, if he saved the world, you know. Uh, so I, I know I'm talking to a brick wall. No, you're but, not talking uh, to a brick wall. You're, going, you're talking to people who know him for what he is. A uh, cocksucker. Yeah. yeah, he's the cocksucker that stood up to the Iranians. Oh, yeah, he stood up to the Iranians. Big, tough yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah, he couldn't stand uh, up to oh. anybody when it came to joining the military for crying out loud because of his bone spurs. So don't tell me he's some kind of, you know, uh, uh, big hero. So uh, you, you never did anything you weren't proud of? Uh, I you know, that I wasn't proud of? Yeah. Uh, not particularly, no. 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 <laughs> and I served in the military, unlike you, unlike Trump. Right. Yes. Yeah, I for will. 20 years. I yeah, yeah, yes, yes, Patrick. <laughs> Two things. Um, no way they don't don't, don't yeah. ever get up again, because when you add all that light to that room, that's wow. really fucking scary. <laughs> <laughs> She's got plates on here, yeah, look. <laughs> what, what is that? What is that? My green decorative plates. plates. They got to be like 50 years old. She hangs them up. Come on. Do they have sections so you can use them for Passover? No, I mean, she, do you get that? Do you get that Jewish expression from your mother? Those are not for eating. They're not. She just <laughs> hangs everything up. They're for show, sure, not for eating. Don't take it out. What, what are you going to oh. say, Todd? She's saying the rosary. New York, that old wallpaper. That should look familiar. Yeah, it looks really You're familiar. Clashing. You're right. I think the Bates <laughs> Motel had that kind of wallpaper. You're right. Uh, I didn't uh, notice it. It doesn't even like match. Back at home. Oh, wow. look at the chair she rail. Thinks, she thinks this is good. Look at this. It's the dive floor. Come on. <laughs> She's hey, your employer. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Think. Let her think it's Please, nice. don't talk. Yeah, don't talk about your boss that way. Exactly. <laughs> she may Patrick's fight. got his hand up if you can. Yes, see. Patrick. Cody. Thing is, um, I do agree with Phil with what uh, Trump did. Um, there's no reason not to have attacked the uh, base or the airport. We knew where he was at. Uh, Hezbollah and Iran are considered a uh, terrorist organization. If you can take them out, take them out. Just like mm -hmm. with Bin Laden, just like Al Baghdadi, same shit. Take them out when you got the chance. Yes, right. uh, Todd. I got a question. Now, if everybody remembered Bin Laden warned America and everything like that after what happened when we turned our backs on them with the Russians. And he said that he declared war on us. Nobody paid attention. So every time we bomb somebody and do something stupid, we make more and more terrorists. Instead of killing everybody and acting a fool, I see you nodding no, but I mean, dude, think about it logically. Now, yeah, I know I'm, both, I'm all uh, for killing all the fools. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, that we make more fools when we kill them. So at, at the end of the day, it really doesn't solve anything. It's more people for you to pull out your itty-bitty pistol and miss well, everybody with. Th this is the itty-bitty one. Yeah, that's the one I was talking about. Yeah, and it's an itty-bitty pistol oh. compared to somebody oh. who decides he wants to do some damage. Okay? And, and doesn't, by the way... This one's itty or bitty. By the way, oh, she's got guns. <laughs> You know, it just, it just it puts a chill down my back, Phil. Yeah. If I visit, I'm afraid if you shoot me, <laughs> I didn't like the food. Uh, if you keep if you keep texting me, uh, you can be guaranteed I'll shoot you. <laughs> keep well, I'll, I'll keep bothering you, Phil. You know I'll keep yeah, bothering it, you, quit, bro. Quit sending him pictures of uh, Scooby Doo uh, there. Yeah, uh, he kill Scooby. Yeah, because he'll <laughs> he'll uh, he'll come out to your house and kill you. Yeah, because yeah. he's got the firepower to do it. He with. does. It's like the militia there. I've got firepower. That's no. a little. Oh. <laughs> How's <it laughs> soundproof? I'm in my truck. Yeah. I was over there near my, my, my home area. Oh, oh, I would love it. The show. Now you're Phil. from Virginia? My you... parents, uh, they moved down to Virginia. Now, is that uh, where you keep your guns? Driver, because I'm not really that fond of Virginia. I Todd, miss is, is that where you keep I your miss guns? Boston, and I miss Maine. Todd, I, they I, just I, made I, some new rules in Virginia about guns and uh, gun ownership. Uh, 
Hmm? Well, so uh, I, 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 you know, now, of course, I forgot exactly what the law was that just went into effect on the uh, first of the year. But uh, Virginia uh, has uh, made some rules that are making it very difficult, I guess, to either to buy them, own them. Or, uh, they're, they're not as bad as New York, but uh, mm -hmm. right up no. there. No, in, yeah. in Virginia, um, well, New, York, New York has always been that way, Phil. I mean, we've had the, the law here ever since I was originally here in New York at WMCA. They had, what what was the name of the law it was called? Uh, Sullivan Law. The Sullivan Law, yeah. And uh, you just couldn't own a gun in Manhattan. You know, you were just not uh, allowed to. It had to be registered to you, but lots of luck on uh, getting it registered. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A friend of mine went to jail for three years. Uh -huh. There was a home invasion robbery. He had a bodyguard. The bodyguard left his gun at his apartment in New York and Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this guy broke in. It's the second home invasion that he'd had in three months. And uh, he thwarted it uh, with, uh, using the bodyguard's gun. So the police come, he shows the police the videotapes of uh, what happened, mm -hmm. and they arrested him, and he ended up uh, going to prison for three years. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's why they gave him three. It's amazing. Instead of five. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I just, uh, you know, peace on earth, goodwill towards men, you know? I mean, <laughs> tell me, please. Uh, bullshit, you know? I mean, um, our good friend Shecky is down in Antarctica right now. Oh, yeah. And I, I so cool. envy him, not because he's in Antarctica, but he's just away from everything. I was going to say You know, I mean, how far away can you get from this shit than going to Antarctica? You know? Can I, I ain't take me? Further. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Coming back. It's like, you don't have to worry about getting killed. Yeah, he has to come back from Antarctica. That's, uh, that's didn't the you sad part. Audio. Like, you know, I, I think it's very violent. By the way, I was talking to him on the phone the other day, and uh, he said that the uh, uh, the penguins shit a lot, like every four minutes. Oh my god! So when they, you go to visit the penguins, you're really walking around a lot of penguin shit. It's poop. -o. You know, so those Still cute little emperor penguins can go fuck themselves. Still would be shooting in penguins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Um. But you've been sending back some nice pictures. Have you seen some of those pictures? Uh, no, I didn't see anything go, yet. I go, got a visit go, go, to, go to his uh, Facebook page, Rick Shekman, Richard Shekman. Oh. And it's, uh, they, they're beautiful. Just be, I'm so jealous, you know. So uh, what kind of trip is it? Is it an eco trip or is it, uh, no, you know, I'm sure he's not it's, at the it, spa. It, it, no, it's a, it's a very fancy uh, yacht that about, holds about 400 people. Oh. Uh, and uh, uh, they they serve the best food they can possibly do. He's got a beautiful room. It looks like, you know, it's a huge room. And yeah. uh, he's got Wi-Fi there. That's how come he could uh, FaceTime me and, uh, wow. you know, show me what was going on. And uh, it was pretty cool. Pretty cool. So when they get when they get off the boat to go shopping, where, uh, where do they, they go? They don't go shopping. They go <laughs> up on an ice floe or something like that, and yeah. they're guided around it so they don't get killed. You know, wow. so. that sounds that sounds wonderful. Oh yeah, what, you know, it's costing a fucking shit? fuck. Sure. If I wouldn't. I'm not even going to tell you how much it's costing him. Uh, yeah. I bet you it's twenty grand. Let's try more. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yes, uh, Jeff. What? Where does it start? It starts in I think in uh, 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 Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, if I'm not mistaken, and then it goes down around Tierra del Fuego, down the you know, the bottom of South America, and then out over to Antarctica, which isn't that far at that point. You know? No, very close. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Had he, had, did, was he able to see any of these ice flows and, uh, you know, uh, what's going on? Uh, is there uh, uh, land now uh, melting back? I'll have, uh, to ask him I, I'll have to ask him when I see him again next time. Because he, he wasn't at the ice flows at that point. He wasn't at uh. Uh, Antarctica at the point that I talked to him last. Oh, look, we're getting a beautiful shot now without any dimming of the, uh, to get that full effect of that wallpaper. God, that's fucking hideous. Yeah, and... Also, that uh, hutch. The hutch has, is uh, uh, the yeah. hutch is equally hideous, and I that, hate and I would hate to see what she's got in there. That's on a display. museum piece. Yeah, that's a museum piece. Uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Wait a minute. What? Yes, yes, Todd. Wait a minute. So when I happen to move around somewhere, y'all probably talk mad shit about me then. 
Well, don't you listen to the show the next day? No, we don't talk (laughs) mad shit about you because you're very cool. Look at that. Look at that truck, for Christ's sake. Right. Jesus, you know. Hey, I watched I watched the movie you were in when I was on a plane uh, 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 last week or a couple weeks ago, coming back from Maui. Uh, I saw your movie, Undercover Brother Two. <laughs> you never saw Undercover Brother? Why are you saying that? Because he's black? Well, exactly. yeah. It, it's, 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 I love wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Can I get him, or you want to get him? I, I just got him. You can get him now. Yes. Oh, really? Oh, so it's a black thing? See, oh, now, it, man, you be cool. But see, that's the third time. Last now, time we talked. Look, if, was I, if I shag... Wait, wait, wait hold on a second, up. Phil. Let him right. say it. What? Bro, right. Look at motherfucker. If I said I saw Shaft and you reminded me of Richard Roundtree, uh, you would be upset? Well, what's the similarity? Because they're both black. Well, he's the similarity was undercover brother was cool. Everything he did. I don't look like them. And yes, oh, oh you got to see that. Nice individual. I don't look. Like like undercover brother fights the man, and uh, yeah, he, it's just keep digging it. Just man. keep digging it deeper, Phil. Go right ahead. Well, here's a guy. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Realize hey, Phil, that he has Phil, these Phil, wonderful movies. Phil. 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 I'm digging your hole. <laughs> oh, yeah. Keep on walking. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, off, I offer you a, 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 a wonderful, uh, magnificent movie masterpiece that you hadn't seen, mm-hmm. and you're telling me no, you're digging it, hole. Sir. I've okay. seen it. Thank you for assuming that I haven't seen any of those movies, but at the same time, even though I'm young... Well, not young, but younger. Um, but yes, I saw those movies. What and, are you um, saying? I'm old now. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's talk to the uh, terminal uh, to, to one of the terminally white guys, Patrick. Yes, Patrick. Um, hey, Phil. Yeah. Save them. You know how uh, Alec was just talking about the penguin shit. Yeah. I yes. think you're stepping in your own shit right now. Oh, no, I'm the one of the coolest movies. Uh, the coolest movies made. You know, if there was a movie, Wait a I, Phil, you know, Phil, I watched Phil, the one. Phil, when, when I want to find out about cool, you're the last guy I'm going to go to. Okay. okay. I watched Spy on, uh, I think, on Netflix with uh, uh, Sha- Sasha Baron Cohen. And mm-hmm. I thought it was a cool movie. And now here it is about Israelis and Jews. I'm not digging digging a hole, you know, because I like cool movies about Israelis and Jews. I tell a guy who, you know, might enjoy Undercover no, no, Brother no, no, 2. No, 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 you're talking about a movie with Shah Sasha Baron Cohen that has to do with your own race. Now you're talking with, uh, you know, uh, you know, whatever. Oh, so, so you can't mention the fact, the obvious fact that the man is black. You know, uh, it, it, it's, it's, you so don't, you, Phil, do? Phil, ignore, Phil, Phil, you it? don't have a clue of what we're talking about. Todd, tell them what we're talking about. Well, it's not just what we're talking about. The simple fact is, you know how many Jewish family members I have with me? Um, see, I'm adopted. I really, uh, that I'm adopted, but a lot of people don't know that. But yes, I'm with a black family. But in my black family, we have a lot of Jewish people. So while at the same time you talking what you just said, I have Jewish people in every I'm dude. So you know, it's kind of like an undercover brother. So I'm supposed to say that you know I don't know you're with some uh, of my relatives are black. I happen to know uh, that Ethiopia there's a Jewish uh, tribe of to of, begin of with black, to begin with Phil and Jews. I just I just remember. <laughs> Phil, 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 first of all, first of all, first of all, Phil. Undercover Brother is not about somebody who's shoving it to the man. It's a comedy, Phil. Yeah, but he... It's a it, comedy, it, Phil. It's, it's not... Uh, huh? He's giving it to the man. No, it's a comedy. It happens to be a very I funny comedy. It to you. But yeah, it's, it's a funny comedy, Todd. No, but no, but you were talking about it before, like, well, he's somebody who's given it to the man, and so on. Then that wasn't well, what that it was about. Sense. It was like it was a comedy, right? And part of the comedy is he's sticking it to the man. Yeah, no, you know, oh, that, that's, oh, that's his. Phil. That's Phil. Moniker. Just keep digging it deeper and deeper and deeper uh, and right. deeper. 
Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Todd, you'll get some of the culture of uh, Undercover Brother 2, and well, then you'll let me know how much you enjoyed it. Huh? Anyway, let's change the subject. I've been watching movies lately. Uh, because... You're just digging, man. Did you see Undercover Brother 2? I've seen it. No, I didn't see Undercover Brother 2. Because uh, because uh, I I was happy with one and didn't want to get to two. Okay. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Well, it it has to do with the fact that oh, he was geez. frozen Phil. in an avalanche for thirty years and then he comes back, and oh. uh, I, I won't be a spoiler. And sticks it to the man. I see. He sticks okay. it to the yeah, man yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he God. gets him at the end. All right. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anyway, so we got, I got my movie. You know, I got my uh, screeners that I've been wa we've been watching. Uh, mm -hmm. Two films not to watch. If you can avoid them, avoid them at all costs. Hustlers is one of them. Terrible movie. Horrible <laughs> film. What's the, and uh... Jennifer Lopez is very mediocre in it. Okay. And the other one is Judy, which is just oh, god I didn't awful. See it. it is no good? god awful. I was is there anything good huh? out there? Is there anything good I was out there? Oh, yeah. Them. The best film I've seen... This year, you said 1917. 1917 right? is, is they say that's amazing, good, yeah. amazing, yeah. and um, maybe the best film of the decade, actually, if, if I were to be honest about it. And um, um, uh, we uh, we kind of like Bombshell. We thought that was okay. The thing about Fox News. Uh, we uh, what did we enjoy? There were some other films. Oh yeah, we watched uh, Ferrari versus um, uh, Ford versus Ferrari. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed lot. it very much. It's a very enjoyable film. Great racing yeah. film, you know. Uh, what else did we see? Um, oh, yeah, uh, Parasite, which I, I think is a terrific film. Marjorie didn't like it quite as much. Uh, I don't know how old this one is, but I also saw it on the plane, and it had to do with Ferraris. Uh, it, it, it was do dogs driving in the rain. Uh, and uh, the dog's name was Enzo, and the guy ended up working for Ferrari. Uh, did you see that one? Uh, it's Italian dog, from Enzo. No, no, it wasn't Italian, but it was no, you know no. do dogs driving in the rain. I think it was. It was, was it, very touching. Was, wasn't that originally called Undercover Dover? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Dover. Hello, yeah. uh, there's uh, there's uh, our old friend. Oh, hold on a second, let me get him in here. Uh, there's Kevin. Uh, uh, let me see here, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Where are we? Uh, we're going. We got to go to Hog Rider. There we go. Boom! He should pop up any second now, folks. There we go. Hello, Kevin. Hey, Alex. How are you? How'd you spend Christmas? Uh, I know, shouldn't ask. Ah, <laughs> uh, pretty oh. much hung around. Mm -hmm. Did you That's check a family uh, over, Did you make a list? Family. Were you checking That's it like... twice? Were you trying to find you out you it was betcha. naughty and nice? You betcha. Yeah. Hey, Santa. Uh, it was called The Art of Racing in the Rain. And uh, it was a very nice movie, you know, uh, touching. Oh, that was about uh, Enzo and the Ferrari. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Well, this yeah, film, exactly. Ford versus Ferrari, Enzo Ferrari is a character in the film. I wanted yeah. to see that, and I missed it in a local theater. Now I'm going to have to go find it. Yeah, it's, what, which it's, one? it's really very good. It's, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it, it a lot. I'm trying missing. to remember what else we saw that I liked. Um, let me just look up my my SAG after a screener thing here. SAG. Oh, hold on a second. Ugh, God, I can't even do that. SAG. Yeah, I got a for you guys if you wanted to check it out, but I got to dig up the name. Huh? What's that? I got a, a, a movie I saw on Netflix. Yeah. Let me pop TV on. See, because I got it like that in my truck. I got you know, all of the TV stuff. So you got me a second. Okay. I've been watching it before I got up with you guys. I just can't remember the name. It's like some Muslim joke with like a dude that's acting like something like that. Oh, okay. You don't know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. It's, um, I'm spelling because um, I. My, I don't have my glass on. Okay. I'm spell it. M e s l i a h. I believe you look like a Muslim dude. It's, it's pretty good. Messiah. Anybody know? Uh, Aziz. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um. So far, we saw uh, bombshell. Ford versus Ferrari. 
Uh, we uh, saw The Irishman, which I think sucked. Yeah, I remember that. Hustlers. Jojo Rabbit, which is a great little film. Great little film. Uh, Judy. Uh, Marriage Story, but we caught that on Netflix. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, we actually caught that when it was in the theaters. And, oh, I saw Joker as well. Um, which one are you going to vote for? I think for Best Actor, probably Joaquin Phoenix. He really was terrific. Uh, you know. Which one was that one? Joaquin. Uh, Joker. Uh, okay, about, I'm going to I'm gonna have to look at that one. It's all about the Joker, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that the one that um, everybody, like a little while ago, people were trying to kill themselves? Or that's a different Joker? Uh, no, they, they were saying that they were worried that the film would cause problems. I can't figure out oh, why I didn't see that. anything in the film that was going to cause problems, you know. Yeah, okay, uh, good. But uh, good we haven't watched A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Oh, I didn't see that uh, yet. Or, 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 or oh, Har yeah. Harriet. The, man. Harriet, Sorry. the film about Harriet Tubman. Uh, we haven't watched that. We haven't watched Rocket Man. I'm probably not going to. I watched Rocket Man, and I thought it was a good movie. Okay. Yeah, I, I saw it on the plane. Well, that's a good reason for none of us to see it, folks. <laughs> uh, and then Us uh, uh, is another film that we haven't watched yet, but we're going to watch. Um, so that was uh, that's pretty much the films that you know that we we've laid our hands on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen films. So you know, uh, I, I like Parasite a lot. I like Jojo Rabbit. Thought it was a wonderful film. It's about a young Nazi youth boy in Germany whose imaginary friend is Adolf Hitler. Oh, my God, really? Uh, it, it's done by a guy who did an uh, American series, which you may have seen, called What We Do in the Shadows, about vampires. Ooh, you were saying and he's got a really weird sense of filmmaking. And this thing is alternately funny and poignant. Oh. And at the end, the kid f sees the errors of his ways, but it, it, it Scarlett Johansson is in it playing his mother. It's it's a brilliant film, and and not what you you know from an unexpected source, just wonderful film. So, those are my you know, that's what I've been watching so far. Uh, Do you only get to vote on one type of uh, award, or uh, you don't get Best Picture and all of those things? There's no such thing as SAG. Oh. SAG is for actors. It's for actors. acting okay. awards. So it's ensembles. It's uh, male and female supporting and lead. Then there's a whole television category, you know, mm. um, which we have to vote on. Uh, yeah, but it, it no, but they they don't do best picture. That's not. Oh, that's Emmy. That's uh, the the um, the Emmy, I guess. Yeah, or, no, the, the Oscars. Uh, Oscar, Oscar. Yeah. I don't watch any of those. Well, things. no, we got we have the we on Sunday we have the phony fuck awards coming up. Yeah, I watch the Golden the Globes, which yeah. you know the truth of the matter is, folks. In case you wonder why I call them the phony fuck awards, what? how many people do you think vote? On the Golden How do they Globes. Work? Do they vote on it? Do you, do you, uh, how many people do you figure vote on it? I have no idea. How many? Uh, Ten. I'll give you an example. In the Academy, I think there are 30,000 members. Oh, yeah. I know that SAG has 30,000 members. So how many, how many people do you think vote for the Golden Globes? 200. Oh, Try 97. And they're and they're all uh, members of the Foreign Press Association, okay, uh, which numbers among themselves basically waiters at restaurants in Hollywood. <laughs> they're probably <laughs> drunk. Y yeah. Uh, so and everybody makes a big deal out of these awards every year. Yeah. You're going, well, you know, this is it. Oh, the uh, Golden Globes, big fuck. No, it's no big fucking deal. It's the phony fuck awards. They don't really exist. They were created to be basically, a, they weren't even a big factor years, a couple of years ago until NBC decided to start carrying the phony fuck awards. I think it was NBC. Uh, decided to start carrying them. 
before that, they were on some lesser channels, and they never nobody cared about the Golden Globes. They didn't even show up for them. You know, mm. now it's a big deal, star studded. You know, precursor to the Oscars. Fuck you. More about them getting oh, dressed right. up, isn't it? Huh? Uh, More about them getting dressed up uh, and getting a free meal. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of rich people in Hollywood getting yeah, a free meal. Estate, you know, free. go pay yourself. <laughs> Come on. But what I'll tell you, uh, it, it, I'll tell you, you can always figure out what's going to win, though. I'll tell you right now, 1917 uh, is going to win as Best Picture. <clears throat> I'm sure of it. Yeah. And Best Director, and I'll tell you why. Because the Foreign Press Association. Oh, they like it. If it's somebody from Europe, they, they're all for it. You know, so. Uh, but it, 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 that's a, it's a great film, so it should win. But, you know. Yeah, I'll have to see it. Yeah. But it, so, uh, uh, and then everybody on let's say it's on Sunday, and then on Tuesday everybody forgets who won. You know, in fact, uh, except except Larry Brown, he can tell you. Well, here, here, uh, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I could say to you, uh, if if the Academy Awards are so important, who won last year? What was Best Picture? Quick, somebody, quick. I have no idea. See, <clears throat> it was that movie you like. Wait, what was it again? <laughs> Frozen. <laughs> no, it was on Netflix. I think was exactly. it or no? No, that was the best uh, foreign picture. That was uh, oh, Europa. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Roma. Oh, Roma didn't win? Of Europa. Oh, Europa. Now, know. what was best picture? I don't even remember. Jeez, I don't know now. See? I mean, that's how important they are. You're right. I don't even remember. I can tell you what the best picture was in 1927, though. Who won best picture, you think? In, in, in 1927, it was Wings. Oh, well, that's it was, a... was a silent film. Oh. The first Senator Academy Wilson Awards won, ever. Won oh. Who did win? Who won for soundtrack? Uh, <laughs> there was no sound. Wow. Some yeah. guy with a piano. <laughs> you know. Bill, um, Bill. Yeah. Um, hey, hey, I know you, you're you're in a metal box, but, you know, one of these days you'll get the humor. That is so comfy. Oh. I, no, mean, I got the humor. I'm a, Todd, I'm coming to moving in with you. You know. How much headroom is in that thing, Todd? Can you stand? I you can't stand up. Can you sit up? Do a backflip in it, bro. Really? Yeah. So, uh, how much room is uh, is there uh, in in there? Uh, well, the I'm reason I ask. Now I got a top bunk above me. Yeah. My uh, one of one of my flat screens is in front of me. My other flat screens over near my refrigerator, and I got my passenger seat, my driver's seat up front. Um, I got all the lights I can get on so you guys can see me because usually I keep it pretty dark. Well, so you got I, you I have you been watching. You actually have a bunk bed there so that somebody could stay with you if they wanted to. Yeah, mm. right up here. Oh, wow. Right up here. Wow. So if you had a dual driver, uh, you could both sleep. If you had a dual driver, you could both sleep at the same time. It's a co-driver. Co-driver, dual Thank driver. You. Thank you, Santa. Help him out, please. <laughs> but you got, but you, but you got to be, you got to be a trusting. You know, I only had one guy that I would ever let be a co-driver with me, and he passed away. Wow. God rest his soul, bro. Yeah. I would not let nobody ride with me. That's I mean, right. I'm gonna drive when I'm sleeping. That's right. Because I'm. You got You got to. You got to be. Him. You got to know who's driving. And trust the guy who's driving because if you're going to sleep at all, you got to know who's up there going down the road. Look There's another driver. Look who's joining us here. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Speaking gotta, of hauling uh, body wait, parts, wait, wait there's Brian. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got to. I got to go here to. Uh, no, I don't want eight. I want screen. seven. Right. And I got to go. I got to put in uh, Brian. Hold on a second. Let's see here. Can I figure out who he is now? Is it? Uh, oh, it looks like you're probably. Are you live? One ninety six six E D C six. Well, no, no, yeah, I guess that's got to be it. Well, let me push it and see what happens. Okay, let me see here. Are we gonna uh, have a? Yeah, that is him. Uh, it's not his name, but don't wear it out. Hello, Brian. How are you? Hello. Hopefully you can hear me. Yeah, we haven't heard from you in a long time. Uh, September, I think. Yeah, so we got a lot of oldies but goodies here, and, and Todd mm -hmm. and you. Yeah. Are you still driving school bus? Yes. 
Yes, I know. Yeah. The wheels on the bus go round, round and, and round, round, <laughs> round and round, round and round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, they were quick on the bus <laughs> drive, and they moved the kids around. Yeah, well, yeah. I, uh, who was it? What comedian I don't know uh, that used to have the joke about uh, uh, I, 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 I was going to be a bus driver, but I can't stand having people in back of me. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine yelling at the kids? Uh, that's the only. That's the only thing that I didn't drive was a bus because of cargo talks. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> cargo <laughs> talks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, on on YouTube, the reason I was asking Todd about the the, the thing sometimes on YouTube. The thing you mean undercover uh, brother? No, no, no. The cab. Oh, oh the uh, cab. Yeah, oh, okay. He's gonna get him. He's gonna yeah. Love. So you, you come on out here, you can come get me. So uh, I've been watching on YouTube these people that live in their vans, and they make these uh, amazing setups, uh, and and they cook gourmet meals, and uh, and you would you wouldn't believe what they do. Phil, with their Phil, off-road it's what vehicles. what is better known as the homeless. No, they're not homeless. They do it. They do it on purpose, and they travel, oh, really? and uh, you know they meet other people and have experiences. It's it's an interesting thing, and what some of these people do to their vans and how they uh, make them warm at night, and they have well, extra curtains that go on the windows. You know, there's there's uh, also like these FedEx drivers that yeah. I run into, used to run into all the time. They they take you know what we call bobtails or or twenty foot box trucks. Yeah, and they'll put something like Todd's driving uh, uh, a semi new bedroom sleeper on a twenty foot mm-hmm. truck, and they drive around and pick up FedEx packages, and it's a husband and wife team, and they haul around these express packages. It could be one pallet with a with a bunch of books on it or some parts on it, and they'll haul it all the way across country, mm-hmm. and that's all they do is they see the country, but they just deliver. A package or a, or a pallet or something for, you know, five thousand, six thousand dollars, and they well, see the country by doing this, and they got this two bedroom sleeper that they can go back and they you know cook their meals and they got the whole bit. You're yeah. talking about a super tractor. Yeah, yeah. The it's, ones it's, with the washer, yeah, like dryer, the shower. They're owner operators. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. So as I said, when I was seeing these vans and the and the unbelievable stuff they were doing to them, you know, I, I thought it was pretty interesting. That's why I asked what kind of headroom you got in there and you know, uh Yeah, and they get paid to do that. So they just drive around the country and pick up packages, go from here to there and then Well, you know, it's funny. I, I ship some things ground FedEx uh freight and uh they have really low rates. Uh, you know, sometimes you can ship a pallet for two hundred dollars. Well, sure, right. yeah, but that's regular freight. But if you're talking about one of these express places, oh. that, that you, they pick it up and take it straight over there, and you're paying way up the nose. You can pay twenty grand to have them do it. Wow. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So, but well. yeah, that's that's what a lot of people do after they you know drive for a living or whatever. They just want to go drive around instead of get, buying an RV or something like that. They'll become yeah. an owner operator for FedEx and take express packages. Mm. And, you know, they'll pick up something and take it from California to Texas and then take something from Texas to, you know, Nebraska or something. They see the country and they got two bedroom sleeper or whatever. Well, these, ahead, these some of these people have a car like mine, like an FJ Cruiser. And they've got uh, they've got it built out to when they open the door, everything slides out and there's compartments for everything you can imagine. They got refrigerators, inverters on the roof. They've got a thing that's a tent and, uh, it's, it's amazing what they do, uh, uh, to these cars. And so it was interesting. And sometimes I fall asleep watching that, you know, on, (laughs) on the iPad. (laughs) I think they had one of those, an undercover brother, didn't they? Yes, they did. (laughs) Yes, they did. And, but it was covered up by the avalanche. And uh, fuck the with the other, other fucking brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just jealous that you you're not sticking it to the man. With the other kind of brother shit. Where's right. the other brother? I need some backup. Where's the yeah. other guy? Yeah. You're just jealous you that jealous. you're not sticking it to the man. If you were sticking it to the oh, man, you'd like undercover brother. Come find you. Remember you said that. <laughs> 
Now, I drive all around the United States, and you know well, I don't mind stop by saying hi. You, you if I, re- if I remember, if I remember correctly, the plot of Undercover Brother. So, the, the plot. I'll stop that. If I remember correctly, the plot of Undercover Brother was about a guy who was anachronistic. That uh, he was, uh, uh, all the other people laughed at him because he was dressing up like he was something out of the 50s with an afro, afro, with afro pics in his hair and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So how is he sticking it to the man? Yes. (laughs) But you see, he had superpowers. And what happened was, in other than Cover Brother 2, uh, he got covered up in an avalanche, and when he comes back, you know he he's been uh, frozen for thirty years. He's like, and, well, uh, you know what I liked about Undercover Brother too? It answered so many of those unanswered questions from questions, Undercover yes. Brother. Yeah, that's true. I haven't seen one. I don't even know what the fuck you got. So Undercover Brother one or two, I haven't uh, seen. It's one of the funniest movies you'd see in a long time. I ain't watched that shit, man. Yeah. No, he's sticking it to the man. Yeah. I'm talking to the man. Mm. Well, that's true. Uh, hey, you bro. know, I I once thought about opening up a coffee shop in Berkeley uh, called Stick It to the Man because every time they buy coffee, they were they were paying the man. <laughs> so I, they were sticking it to the man. Stick it to the man coffee. I thought it would go over really well in Berkeley. And then I had the idea for uh, nuclear free coffee was my decaf. Phil, but I Phil, I didn't think Phil, of anything Phil, after that. St- stick with carpets. Even with carpets, I had an idea of an all Elvis Thursday that you know the salespeople dress up like Elvis. You know, I've bought several kinds of coffee for my curry that have yeah. just lethal names on them, and none of them are strong. Did you get Black Rifle yet? No. <laughs> I'll have to send you some of that. Is, oh, really is that strong? It's supposed to be. I uh, want something that's going to take the hair off my. Well, wait a minute. No, that won't work. Yeah. Uh, something that's going to take the uh, fur off my. No, I. Uh, uh, I didn't off work your either. back. <laughs> I want something you know, that's going to, uh, you know, really wake me it's up. It's going to melt your tongue. I understand. Yeah. Because I'm going to yeah, need. Some, with, with, with all this radioactivity in me, I'm going to need some strong stuff going for me now. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I've been thinking about uh, ordering that black rifle stuff. If I order it, I'll send you one too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, I think they've got Keurigs. Uh, yeah. Cups. Because I, I'm going to need some real. Uh, they say I'm going to uh, have the mild. What is it? Mild um, fatigue. So I'm going to need a good coffee. You know. What about just going to sleep for a while? Well, that that I uh, see. I have an excuse now, uh, and then when Patrick has his hand up. Uh, I, I have an excuse now. Whenever Marjorie says take out the garbage, I say I can't. I've got cancer. Yes, um, Patrick. Patrick. Oh, this is for Alex and for Phil. So, do you guys drink it black, or do you guys water it down with milk? Or I would, but I'd be digging myself a hole. I drink it. <laughs> I drink it Negro <laughs> because I'm going to be politically correct. That's the best way to drink it. When, early on when I drank coffee, once you go black, you don't go back, and it's true. Am I, am I, by the way, am I right, Todd, or is Negro the funniest term in the world? Oh, I find it cute. It, I mean, it, it's, you know. it's, it's hilarious. Because, and yeah. the reason I find it hilarious is because one of the funniest lines in the National Lampoon uh, uh, Animal House was when the guy says to his friends who come back, uh, he says... The Negroes stole our dates. <laughs> and I love that line. And I what, always, after that, I just found year, that word so funny. What? Wasn't it like 1962 uh, is the year that the movie was set in? Yeah. Uh, so it would have made sense that uh, that's... Well, I remember my father saying to me, you know, uh, the, the, the proper term you use is Negro. You know, I mean, that was considered proper. But of course, white people decided that was proper. But you know, what are we going to say, then Todd? Once undercover brother got a hold what, of everybody. What are we going to oh. say, <laughs> Todd? What are we going to say? Uh, I was agreeing with you back in the '60s to homeboy with the undercover brother bullshit again. Hey, yeah, once yeah. you see it, you'll love it. <laughs> no, but Jesus, uh, dude, leave the undercover brother bullshit alone for five minutes so we can have a logical <laughs> conversation. 
Please. That is a lively conversation. Yeah, about a your travel brother. Anyway, no, but the point is, am I, am I right, Todd? I mean, at one point, that was a perfectly acceptable term. I don't know that it ever became unacceptable. It just became non-used, you know. Well, it, it came uh, more of um, people didn't really kill anybody for it back in the 60s. Yeah, no, that was the, that no, was the thing you said like, to be nice. You Did know. you see, when you were growing up, Alex, because I, I was at the point where I missed it. I was born in 54. Did you see drinking fountains that were uh, uh, colored in white? No, I lived in California. They didn't have those in California. They didn't have that? No. I saw, I saw them in the South when I was a kid. My parents took me to New Orleans for a, uh, they, they were down there for a vacation, I think, and we went down there. And I immediately, when I was a kid, what I loved to do, was I love to go and ride in the back of the bus. Like where mm -hmm. whenever we get on a bus, I would immediately go to the you back think of the Rosa bus. Rosa Parks? Yeah. Well, if we went to New Orleans and my mother took me on a bus and I immediately ran to the back of the bus and everybody was staring at me. What are you doing back here? And my mother said, You're gonna you can't be back there. They won't let you back there. And uh, I didn't understand it. I really didn't. And my mother found it objectionable. You know, most most young people never understand bigotry. Yeah, well, you know, my, well my mother it, found it kind of off-putting, and then I saw, uh, you know, black bathrooms and black water fountains and stuff like that. Wow. But it was totally new to me because I was from California. We didn't have that kind of shit out in California. You yeah, know? well, uh, my I I think they eliminated it uh, just around the time I was born, so. Uh, you know, like no, they never eliminated it. They never had it in California. Well, I was in New York. Oh, in New York. Did they have it in New York? I, I never saw it. I no. don't think they had that kind of segregation in New York. They had no. it in the 40s in New York, my dad told me. Where? When? In the 40s. In the 40s, really? The 40s, uh, 50s, a little bit. When when um, he came back and everything from um, Germany and, and um, for the Army, he told me that, that he couldn't even wear his uniform and stuff like that. And uh, are, you, are you ready for this one, Todd? This this story will really get to you. Uh, Sammy Davis Jr., when he was working Vegas once, put on his swimming trunks and jumped in the pool. They made him get out, and then they drained the pool and they scrubbed it. Oh, my God. You remember oh, Arthur Godfrey? That. Hey, I got something better than that for you, Alex. Yeah. You want to hear this one? Yeah, sure. And I heard that story before, too. I heard that one. Mm -hmm. I got one for you that I think was about 10 years ago. I was over in uh, Virginia, Virginia, was it, I think it was Virginia Beach or um, um, somewhere down, uh, shit, I can't remember exactly where it was. I jumped in the pool. Mm -hmm. They made me get out, and they did the same fucking thing. Really? Yep. Uh, they cleaned, remember... they, they drained the pool and cleaned it? Yep, they they, wow. they they kicked they kicked wow. me out because it was a private club party, and I didn't know that because I had some Caucasian female friends bring me over there. You know, I just happened to come over there. I didn't know where I was going. You, this, you know, there, and you want to talk know how many days it takes to drain a pool and fill it? Would you? Yeah, yes, they did it. but they did they it did in those it. days. And here's the thing: the the amount of stupidity it takes to be racist. Is unbelievable, and the fact that people would go to that, have that much energy to expend on something that stupid, is beyond me. Alex, do you remember? Uh, and is this true? Uh, there was a. Uh, they said that Arthur Godfrey had a hotel on Miami Beach, and he had a uh, sign on the cabana that said "No Jews or Dogs Allowed." No, I didn't hear that. Yeah, yeah that, I, that's what I, I had heard. I just don't know if it's true. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, um, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, so, I mean, I just, you know, but that's, it, racism has always been stupid. And my father, you know, raised me to just not be racist. I mean, he just, uh, well, he was a musician to begin with and, uh, uh, you know, uh, but I, I, I just, I never grew up with, uh, with, uh, with a, with the concept that racism actually existed, until I went to the South, and until I yeah. until I moved to Houston, Texas, I mean, I was down there with Jack Bishop, and Jack had to live on one part of the town in one part of the town, and I had to live in the other, 
And when I invited him to come over and visit me, you should have seen the stares from my neighbors. He's got a Negro in his place, you know? And you and then I, then I went to see him. Everybody wondered, what's a white guy doing in our neighborhood? I mean, and then, oh, here's the great thing. Jack and I would walk down the street with my wife in the middle. And then ah. everybody would stare at us wondering who she was with. You know, that used to really drive them nuts. But, um, you know, ra it, it, that racism is just absolutely stupefyingly idiotic. Uh, and, and a complete waste of anybody's time who engages in it, you know? Uh, yeah. Huh? What were we going to say, Todd? I was fucking with Phil. I said, yeah, Phil, I was joking with him. You uh, know, the undercover brother shit. I was fucking with him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know... Uh, the hotel was called the Kenilworth Hotel in Florida, and it says it supposedly had a sign yeah. that read "No Jews, dogs or Jews allowed." Yeah, dogs got first billing. Mm. Mm. Huh. Yeah, well, you know, um, uh, yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I, my, my. This is on his Wikipedia. Page. My feeling is, Phil, that you know, if Hitler had met you before he met all the other Jews, he would have been happy just to have you. <laughs> Killed. You know, he wow. would have just everything would have been fine after that. You know, That's I, I feel satisfied with right. said Adolf Hitler. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. such a nice guy. <laughs> wow. You know, here I am protecting Jews. I don't even practice yes, Judaism. <laughs> yeah, he would have gone a little easier on the Jews, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. Um, you know, with with the death of, of Jack Garfine, we're losing one of the last people who were in the concentration camps. I mean, they're, they're di all dying off pretty fast, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I have that interview that uh, they, uh, they did for um, uh, uh, Schindler's List movie Yeah. Uh, well, with my friend's family and his father. Fuck him. Uh, Jack hated Schindler's List. Well, uh, I guess, um, uh, who was it that made that movie? Um, Spielberg. Uh, Spielberg. Spielberg. Yeah. Spielberg would send uh, producers to, to yeah. different survivors and interview them and get their story. And I, I have it on a CD, oh, but well, I, I can't. Spielberg's very good at, at, at the maxim that if you can't be sincere, fake it. Well, um, yeah, it, was, it was a good interview. And I, you know, yeah, yeah, um, yes. How, but by the way, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to I want to talk here to our, our good friend, uh, Brian Ludwig, who hasn't called us in a long time. Tell us what you've been doing with your miserable, tawdry life. Oh, no shit. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I, as uh, Phil said, and somebody else, uh, yeah, I'm still driving the school bus mm -hmm. for a school district again. Yeah. Uh, we'll likely be doing that at least until the end of the school year. But yeah. Worst case scenario, indefinitely. Yeah. Do you um, like doing it? It puts money in my pocket. Yeah, but I mean, do you like doing it? That's better than that's better than retail. Well, uh, of course it's better than retail. But what would you want to do if you could? What would be your dream of of what you would do to make a living? Because I, I've said this before uh, a, a long time ago, uh, and alluded to it at least both to you and to Jack, uh, the entertainment industry. Okay, G give him a show on Gabnet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll give him a show on Gabnet. Yeah, that, that that's your entry into show business. <laughs> um, uh, but you know, um, uh, it, it, then you should do it. You know, I I know that uh, you know you, you, it's it's hard to say, but uh, the fact of the matter is, you know, uh, I think it was somebody that once said that a person who does what he loves in life never works a day in his life. You know, you know, Ray, Ray Renati changed careers uh, and uh, got into acting, uh, you know, almost midlife. Uh, you know, he was in a career for 20 years or so and yeah. decided he wanted to be an actor. He, what did he do uh, went to London. Uh, he was in the IT business. Uh, okay. The trouble is show business hardly exists anymore. You know, I mean, uh, it, it's very weird. It's a hard thing to, to suss out as to what you would do in show business. Like, there's no radio left. Forget it. The radio business doesn't exist any longer. 
um, the TV business doesn't exist any longer. It just thinks it still exists. You know, mm-hmm. um, no, it's all streaming and on demand. And yeah, yeah. And if animation ever takes off or non live action media, yeah, well, uh, the actual actors and you know, people who film actual yeah. locations well, and watch I, movies. A- yeah, I'm an anachronism. I mean, I do something that is just, you know, you can't make money doing what I do anymore, you know? Uh, uh, so, I mean, unless I want to do, uh, you know, makeup hints or things like that, you know, on the Internet, and then I can go out and get my one million viewers because I taught you how to put on mascara, you know? So, I mean, it, it's, 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 a weird, it's a weird paradigm that we live in now. Uh, yeah, wh- yeah, what do I do if I need a heavier eyelash here? <laughs> mm. I have no fucking idea. That's why I'm running this piddly little talk show on on a, on Gabnet. You know. Yeah, well, you can fake it. You're an actor. Yeah, <laughs> I can fake it. Get into character. Yeah. Get into Phil. Try to act like Phil, Alex. Yeah, yeah, you got a point. Totally there. Gotten- Sure get happy. Didn't we, uh, I, I can't be duplicated, Tony. He is. That is true. He'd be tough to crack. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you never know, Brian. Can you get into character and do Phil one night? Uh. <laughs> Todd does. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so does Undercover really? Brother. Oh, Jesus. Okay, there we go I'm again, Todd. <laughs> Man, why are you going at a new joke, bro? You're uh, killing me. Because I, I, I know it does. <laughs> We should. I mean, I don't know, would you ever let somebody try to impersonate Phil for a night without Phil being here, like acting like I Phil? have. I have nothing that is, that they could impersonate. You know, I I don't think I have any unique. Uh, you know, you, you look at some people. You look like uh, Trump. You, there's a way of impersonating him. Uh, mm-hmm. You look at Johnny Carson. Easy, easy one to impersonate. Um, John Wayne. But me, I got nothing. You know? Yeah, you can pers- impersonate Trump very easily by taking a pile of dog shit and putting it on television. <laughs> or taking a uh, you socialists are all the same. Filming it. Huh? Uh, just because I think our president is a turd is is makes me a it makes me no, a, left, a lefty. Yes, you're being conned by the Soviet uh, bots that have conned oh. you and into dividing hey, the, the soviet country. bots and elected your 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 boy okay so oh boy i got a hand up yeah oh yes <laughs> uh yes uh brian brian i was just going to say uh before i lose my train of thought here um oh fuck it uh, it'll come back to me it, it you, gets it, worse brian Trust me, it gets worse. Well, I, I, you know, usually I'm not used to Brian not saying that fucking cocksucker motherfucker. Yeah, uh, you had all those great uh, uh, epithets you threw at people, and we don't have that kids. now. He's got to be good in front of the kids now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, they, oh, you got kids, bro? Well, I don't know. He's drives. I work with them. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, man. I am sorry. Yeah. Let's well, drive. That's rough. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a it's, there's a critical national shortage. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, is it is it high school kids, middle school, you know, or it elementary? It varies. Yeah. In my case, it's for a private school. It's uh, oh, okay, so they're probably a little behaved. Well, I hope they're impressionable kids, so you can have your way with them. You know. <laughs> anyway, hey, listen. Now there's our theme song. We'll be back again tomorrow night. I hope we'll see a lot of you, Todd. Don't be a don't be a, a you know. Even I if, will try even, not to. Even yeah, if, and do even, your homework. Even if your truck breaks down, you know, pull over the side of the road and call us. You know. Well, a lot of times I couldn't, but I'll try. Yeah, oh, I know it's a rough truck. it's a rough life out there on the road, and I really uh, appreciate what you guys do to keep the the wheels rolling. You know. You I appreciate that too. I enjoy what I do to try to help. Yeah, hey, and I that, sent you a video of my training. Uh, 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 okay, and and a video uh, of Undercover Brother too. I'm sure. No, I, uh, I wish I yeah, had. It. Yes, uh, 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 Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Uh, 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 Phil. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Uh, I I love seeing uh, 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 Brian here. It's just it's like old home week. Uh, and um, uh, that's it. Uh, everybody, why don't you give a big wave goodbye? And we'll wave back at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our uh, that's our our 
citizen panel for tonight. Let me hang up on them so that uh, I can make the line available for the next uh, the next program. Uh, let me see here. Uh, let me see. Uh, I mean, I gotta I gotta close this off. There we go. Quit. Sc- Wait a minute. I gotta. Oh, I gotta take myself offline. See, I remember. I forget how to do all of this because I was away for two weeks. Anyway, uh, that's it for tonight. I'll see you again uh, tomorrow night right here uh, back at the old place again. Uh, uh, Jack Bishop is next with the intersection. Uh, see you tomorrow night. Uh, there's no after uh, Damien Chaplin any longer. He'll be here on Monday nights, but we'll explain that to you tomorrow night. Hey, everybody. Bye. Oh, and if you see her, tell her I love her. I forgot that part. I just do that sort of thing, right? Yeah. <laughs>